Jehova mu lak. Allah mu lamat. Jehova mu lak. Ja mu frakis. Jehova gadol. Ma keru yantios. Jehova eronai. Jehova elohim. Kurios tios mante kreita. Kurios tios pestos. Elda et Jehova. Yel emuna Jehova. Ibas leon kurios. Otios. O pante kreita. Basilios basilion kai kurios. Kurio. Jehova dabar halal. Elohim dabar halal. Jehova Elohim, gadol gadol gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon isun ton kurion. Kurion ni mahagion panta kreta, gadol gadol gebura. Jehova Ishmal kam, Jehova shamma. El nakum Jehova, el nakum yapa. Natsak Israel la sheker gava gava triembos yehova isus christos panta kreta gadol gadol geburra moraros nasa elohim elohim illa shalot yehova malak yehova malak olam olam at yehova eloheno Jehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Geburra. Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikaesune, and Isus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Geburra. Derek Emuna Bakar Mishfat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. The intention of Lord God the Father in creating man is to give him the great name where in first chronicles chapter 17 in verse number 21 while david is praying to lord god the father for his greatness which he has shown he tells to the people of israelites then in the past dispensation in comparison with amos 3 3 living those people then he knew on the face of the earth he says, What one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, 
whom God went to redeem to be his own people. And he says the reason why he has redeemed them. To make thee a name of greatness and terribleness. The word what we can look, the name of greatness is called to be Gadol. And the people called to be terribleness, it is called to be as Yare. Or the point meant to say, the deeds being feared. Instead of the word terribleness, it should be written over there. The deeds being feared. And what would be the deeds? If the people of Israelites would walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to prove the commandments of the Lord our God. Everything what they might have done on the face of the earth, it would have made many people to get fear and get back to Lord God the Father. The reason of his redemption, he prays, who is like unto thee, O Lord, who could be compared? There is none like you. That's what he says in verse 20 of 1 Chronicles 17. And when he comes to verse 21, he has redeemed his people so that he can make thee a name of greatness and he can make thee a name of great terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people whom you have redeemed them out of Egypt. So he says, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness. That is, through their lives, God the Father could be glorified at the same time, reflecting back their glory to them as well, that they will be great and terrible people. It reflects to both. First, the sun, what it goes to give the original light. The moon reflects back that light. The same relationship between husband and wife. Wife is no way far better than the thinking of her own husband. So here as well, the same standard which reflects. First, Christ our Lord of God's name and his greatness would be made known. And then, that same name and greatness would be reflected back among the people of Israelites. So the very simple reason why he has chosen them, why he has redeemed them, so when we now compare that to the church, which we are now in the church age, being given to us everything in the completed can of scripture, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, the player of Baltimore privilege is what we can call. How much more his name has to be honored and how much more his name has to be revered when looking upon the good deeds of our life by trampling down the works of Satan. In fact, indeed, making known to Satan to realize and to understand that if God be for us, who can be against us? If Lord God, the Holy Ghost is indwelling in us, the one who is greater than anything else on the face of the earth, then how much more we need to make his name great and how much more we need to make his name to be feared or revered. And how we can make his name to be great when we walk in his word. But the problem with us is Jeremiah 23, 9 when the prophet says, my heart within me is broken. I have become like a man who is drunkard. He says the reasons because of his word and the word of his holiness. You know, that will be a very great pain for each and every pastor teacher who ought to make known to this people the unique purpose of Lord God the Father in choosing the church age to fill the earth with his glory and to make every believer to understand that they have to conform to the image of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If Jeremiah spoke those words in the great discourse of Acts chapter 28, in spite of giving them proper exposition of the word of Lord God, in spite of giving to them great 
persuasion to use the word that people mocked they did not believe he records in acts 28 verses 21 and 22 and then apostle paul says rightly spake lord god the holy ghost through the prophet isaiah and he said in verse number 24 and 25 acts chapter 28 in verse number 24 and 25 when they agreed not because some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not and when they agreed not among themselves they departed after that paul had spoken one word well spake the word called kalos and the meaning of the word kalos meant to say to be good pleasing or that which we can say that the entire lifetime of their life their body will never be suitable or usable for the things of Lord God so here we look upon this word it says well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our father saying go unto this people and say hearing you shall hear and shall not understand seeing you shall see and you shall not perceive the heart of this people is waxed cross and the ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted the word called epistrapho that is to love and obey god through the true worship of lord god the father and i should heal them that is the hebrew word again you can call as rafa which is nothing but dear brethren to emphasize binding them to the process called to be free from errors and sins so here in this verse when you could look in 21 he says and they said unto him we neither received letters out of judah concerning thee neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of you that is if there were anything that which could be evil ponderous of you but we desire to hear to to hear of thee what you think it for as concerning this sect we know that everywhere it is spoken against and now we know what apostle paul does in verse 23 when they had appointed him a day there came many to him into his lodging to whom what did he do to them or to whom number one he expounded you know this is the thing which is failed in our pulpits the word actitheme meant to say to declare and testified exposition of the word of lord god itself is a testifying for the word if there is no exposition of the word of lord god or the word what we can look in simple terms emphasizing to give to this people that which belongs to them rightly belongs to them if these people are not able to walk in the terms of rightly rightly belonging to them that which is due unto them that which we are due want to give to them you know today if you could look upon the present standards of the christendom word by word line by line precept upon precept or iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera have completely taken off from the face of the earth that which is your bona fide duty to set forth for them if you are saying if you are really doing that then you have to go to teach them 
word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. You know, when they wanted to know about the things pertaining to what they spoke against, they said in simple terms, we want clear and accurate information. The world is also demanding the same clear and accurate information so that they could know the greatness of Lord God, so that they could know and realize the fear that they could pay for that great name of Lord God. The same thing in Philippians chapter 2, if you would look. Why Christ, our Lord of our God's name was been given above every other name, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess, because he had the thinking to say, to suffer for Christ, or to suffer for the will of God the Father. If we could find that in verse number 7 of Philippians 2, when he says in verse 5, beginning saying that, let this disposition, the word mind over here called to be phonorio, or your mindset, the thinking that runs in your brain, let it be the same mindset which has to be wise enough, which has to be prudent enough, which has to be understanding enough. Kakma, the first word, and then shakel, and then Bina. These are the three things. So these three things, they ought to be in you. So when he says the word, in having the same disposition like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, every believer, they ought to be. The Greek word over here in Philippians 2, 5 is called to be Phroneo. But the Hebrew says, first he has to have wisdom that will lead him for prudence, sakel, that will in return make him to be the man of understanding the three spirits which are able to read upgraded from the level of Gebor because when we read those seven spirits which are there in Isaiah 11 2, the first one fear of the Lord that leads them to knowledge that both will make a man to be Gebor and from there on you look the fourth level of the spirit understanding the fifth one, fourth one counsel Fifth one, understanding. And then the sixth one you can call as to be wisdom. So here the word for Neo, what mind Lord God the Father had. The first one, wisdom. The sixth one. And then the fifth one you can look, shakel, countenance, or what you can call as counsel, or the things pertaining to your level of what you can make it up to be as the fifth fold of the spirit. And the fourth one, understanding. So you can be here. When you have to become a Gebor man, you're just coming to gather in your counsel. That gives you understanding and that gives you wisdom. The same thing over here as well. For as what Christ our Lord our God had, he shows. First he had understanding. Then he was prudent to act according to the circumstances of the demands of this life for the fear of Lord God or to fulfill First Chronicles 17.21, which is nothing but to make in the world his name to be great, to make in the world Yehovah Elohim to be reverent, not just reverent, but trembling fear. So he was sakel enough. He was prudent enough. And then what he was, he was kakma. So let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God. And the reasons why today people are not able to have the same mind, because they haven't passed the first three gates. The fear of the Lord God leads you to look and learn the knowledge of Lord God. When you're having the knowledge of Lord God, you're going to call to be a man of Gebor strength. This is your childhood. This is the beginning as you go for your kindergarten in the spiritual lessons. This is just the startup. You have to reach your PhD. You cannot say my son or daughter goes to kindergarten so they're well educated, people will laugh. God the Father has given a purpose with the sevenfold of the Spirit in Isaiah 11. He knew 
what every man ought to be if they could reach the confirmation of the thinking of Christ to have the same mind which was in Christ Jesus our Lord our God or to confirm to the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for which cause we have been predestined in blood God the Father then the very first thing for your kindergarten the things that have been required for you to join your school the fear of the Lord God without fear of the Lord God you cannot come to know proper fear with knowledge as Romans 2 emphasizes they have zeal but not according to the knowledge he claimed them so it is having the fear and no knowledge of the Bible doctrine it's again failure so here dear brethren if you would look having fear with the knowledge people are having fear fear for the thing saying if I don't go to the church if I don't come to worship this Lord whom I have believed then all the things which are disastrous will occupy me in this life the having fear for what fear for the life fear for the bread fear for the health fear for all the things of material prosperity but they don't have the fear to say Lord if I miss this day to grow up in your knowledge of Bible doctrine and to recollect and learn many more things from your word then Lord I'll be losing your glory on the face of the earth they don't have that fear the fear where the glory of Lord God is not shine if you have that fear the first thing you come to see can diligently learn the Word of God you would carry your cross you would become the disciples of Lord's mind you would simply come to know that the heart within us is been absolutely broken as Jeremiah 23 9 because they have forgotten the word rivers of water flow from my head as it says in Psalms 119 Seven times a day, O oh Lord, I will praise unto thee. It is gone because they haven't kept the truth. People may think drunkards. These are drunkards. As one of a guy who commented, emphasizing every time when I preach, it's like a drunken state for them. When I said he's men who was not in accord with the Word of God when we reprimanded him openly in a WhatsApp group he said you preach brother it, it's like a drunken state now maybe I did not feel for that because I'm not a drunkard neither I drink but today when we look upon that verse of Jeremiah 23 9 my heart within me is broken why because it is like a state of drunkenness thinking at least they may forget the troubles the worries but you know the troubles and the worries are so sharp clever swimmers though they have been drowned in the drunkenness of the alcohol they still again by morning swim up and come out and stand before you you ask any drunkard fellow he will tell he thinks at least for some time on this earth for two three or four hours or whatever the state of drunkenness that could act upon his brain make his senses to be dull he would be just lying on the roadsides like a dog or a pig because he thought he has forgot those worries but when he comes to his consciousness after four or five or six hours he realizes those worries have been still running upon his brain so that now he would go to drink a full bottle and again he drowns looking upon the standards of the men the pastors the present Christendom standards it is more than the state of a drunkenness for us to consider as Jeremiah chapter 23 in verse number 9 he said I have been a man like a drunkard because of the words of his holiness the words of Lord God the Father what we have they're preaching about his holiness many people they're trying to decode 
when God the Father breathed unto his nostrils, we became the breath of life. It is nothing but the rima what he spoke. And he becomes a living soul. And then I want to decode back 3,000 years back of ancient text. So fair Etherim, Greg Band, one of a man who tries to analyze this, he goes on to explain so many things on this point. And he said, God eternal within this body. So when the pastors have failed to give you that word of God to your body, they're going to make your body to be drunken. But what here Jeremiah says, he's not drunken, but he said, as a man, comparing that, one who is drunkard, why? Because they have left the essence of doctrine. They have left the proper word of the Lord of a God wherewith these are the words of His Holiness, which is your life, as John 6, 63 emphasizes, Matthew 4, 4, or Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 through 4. He said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are life. That's what men love to research after great scientific research of these things. But long by Christ, the Lord of a God, through the text in the Hebrew, he said, You have become a living soul, breathing into your nostrils the breath of lives. And then furthermore, he emphasizes, Matthew 4, 4, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of Lord God. And do you think he stops there? To examine how much you're going to depend upon this word, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 through 4, he gives you a test. The same test what we look over here in Philippians chapter 2. Let you also have the same mind, the same mind comparison of the sixth fold of the Spirit, so that you can be having now the seventh fold, called to be Lord God of hosts, Yehovah Sabbath. Why? No pressure upon your body because all the time Satan wants to have an umbilical cord of relationship upon your head, upon your body, so that it can completely annihilate and destroy you. It can simply destroy you. But Lord God of hosts comes to give you the information to understand that we are going to survive by his word and that every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of Lord God is our life and examines in you how much you are really able to sustain, how much you are really able to live, how much you are really able to look upon or think upon. Therefore, having been given for us when you have the wisdom, the seventh fold of the Spirit, which is Lord God, the Holy Ghost, will reside and dwell in you. So let us also have the same mind which was in Christ Jesus, not the mind of childhood. Because if you have the fear of Lord God, you should have a fear for knowing the knowledge of Bible doctrine, not for your survival on the face of the earth. Any animal can survive. That's what Lord God the Father calls unbelievers. They survive to be like the foolish virgins, giving extreme sanctity for their behavioral patterns to prove that they are holy, that they are pious, that they have done great sacrifice, walking miles together, and if needed, like naked, barefoot. They simply want to prove that they are more pious. Like the way how Christ our Lord of a God for 40 days and 40 nights without food and water. And he emphasizes the point preparing for the ministry against any odds. But these people, they're emphasizing the points by walking, having one menial food or water. They're proving that they're so much dedicated to their God. They're simply proving fear but no knowledge. And you will not think they will not have knowledge. They will have knowledge, but for the standards of moral application. No harm to anyone. Be good to all. That's the best moral application. But here, when we have the fear of Lord God to get out of the childhood standards, the first thing what you need to have is the knowledge. And when you have this both being mingled together, fear with knowledge, 
That's, that is what it makes up to be the word called Gebor man, man of a great strength. This is what you acquire in your childhood. Now the spear changes from childhood to adulthood. So when Christ told Lord of a God in Philippians chapter 2 in verse number 5 and we talk about, we are talking about the adulthood standards of his word. The fourth stage, bin, understanding. The fifth stage, counsel, yatsa, sakel for us over here. And the sixth stage, Kakma, this is what he had. He had this disposition. He had this establishment because when you have the remaining three, you have been now covered up with the seventh one, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Your complete structure in your body from the top of the head to the top of the feet, any pressure that could rise upon this flesh, you do not fear because you have Yehovah Elohim of Sabbath. Complete protection. That's the word what we find over here in Philippians 2.5 in the Hebrew, Phonorias. And then furthermore, he teaches over here, saying, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took, him, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And then this verse 8 is very, very important. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. After having that same disposition, it doesn't mean to say you have been promoted to be highly exalted. You will be tested back. That's your spiritual maturity standard. We read that evidence testing in two categories, towards life or towards plan of God. If it is towards life like Job, if it is towards like plan of God, every pastor teacher who has been called to serve like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. No food? Then do you should say it is Lord God, the Father's word, we survive. No going down to anything else, we have to survive only to go down to Lord God, the Father. No need to test our Lord of our God in his due time, in his due season. He knows very well. Before we could ever go and ask a petition, or put our supplication, or put our intercession, he knows very well how to provide you. The only thing which you need to ask to Lord God the Father for your petition, for your supplication, for your intercession, you know what? Lord, grant me the wisdom more in that. Lord, I want thy word more in depth. Lord, teach me, teach me your word more. The only prayer which God the Father will be pleased is Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. Ephesians 3, 12 through 18. Philippians 1, 9 through 12. Colossians 1, 9 through 12. Enlightenment of your spiritual eyes. Apart from that, whatsoever you enjoy and perform on this earth, it's called in simple terms as honey. You're just enjoying His grace. You don't deserve Edgar the Father gives you, like the plant which was been encumbered in the soil. So today also, if there is anything which your prayer or supplication, Anything which you want to put to tempt to Lord God, the Father, Lord, provide this, provide that. That time we'll see your deliverance like the way how Gideon does in chapter 6 of Churches. On the night, first night, flees on this, O Lord, and that should be dry. And like the next night, Lord, flees on this, and that should be dry. So he's playing with Lord God, not obeying his word. And I don't know why people keep the name Gideon. Maybe initially it was good, but later on the end is much needed. So the same thing over here, he's trying to say, Lord, do this, then I will obey for it. Lord, do this, then I will obey for it. But Christ, our Lord of our God, said, Don't tempt your Lord your God. 
As a pastor teacher, I must suffer many trials, many persecutions. But you know what? Have the same disposition of Christ, what he had, Katma, wisdom, Sakel, prudence, Bina, understanding. Live in the sphere of spiritual adulthood to the Lord God. Though you know what all you have been given in power, though you know what is your place in heaven, though you know what you are, being free from the fear of the second death, walking in righteousness and holiness all the days of this life, though you know what you are, yet humble yourself till to the point of death, because we are not over here to use the powers to say, Lord, we will do this, give us this power. Then he said, you do not know what sort of a power you have. They should be saved to those people in Luke chapter 10 for the disciples. We shall pull down fire falling upon them. But he said, no, what sort of a mindset you are having? He blames them not to use those powers. To be humble enough. To be humble enough to understand that we are not here to tempt the Lord of a God. And if ever you want to ask anything to Lord God the Father, have only one prayer in your mouth. Lord, enlighten me with your spiritual eyes so that I could know further, so that I could learn more, so that I could be a witness for your word, so that Isaiah 51, 16, planting of the teachings of your heavens, so that they could be firmly found on the earth. They could have the field of desire for you on the face of the earth. Lord, this is what we look. Lord, this is what we want. Apart from that good wife, good children, or X, Y, Z, the cycle of the life on the face of the earth. Unbelievers are very poised enough, like the foolish virgins. They say, Lord, I have done for you this. I have constructed church for you. I have constructed temple for you. I have made so many pilgrimage trips for such and such place. Lord, I have been a faithful servant for you, so you have to do this to me. But they never ask to look upon what the Bible says, confirming to the image of Christ. We ought to wake up from the levels of what the church has been drowned by the thinking of men applied. The standards of the way of life what they're living. Because God the Father, if he chooses Israel in First Chronicles 17, 21, which we read, for his greatness and for the fear, terribleness of his will on this earth. Then how much more he has chosen the church age to be his wife, the church. He has given us great many actions than what the previous people of the past dispensation nor in the future dispensation can ever have. We have been given the privilege of indwelling by Lord God the Holy Ghost, which was not there in the past. Moses longed for it. We have been given the completed can of scripture, which we cannot go to claim and say, Lord, we do not know this, we do not know that. We have been given the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher who can train you up as for the terms and conditions of Bible doctrine. We have been given many, many more things than what you can ever imagine or think. Then how much more we have to make the name of our Lord God to be honored, to be great. How much more we have to make the name of Lord God to be feared. But do you think if they look any Christian, the people are fearing Lord God through you? <laughs> they consider the same great names of the Bible like Daniel, John, Peter, Paul. Look into the criminal history of these names, you will understand. Maybe Daniel will be ashamed for the people who kept his name, who haven't really fulfilled the real purpose of Daniel, kneeling down three times a day and being faithful to Lord God the Father, by shining out that wine and meat and being faithful to the Lord God, not to defile himself with the king's meat. People on this earth of pilgrimage trip, they search for names for the boys or girls and they love to keep the names of them. And today if you look, keeping the name, Daniel, oh, they may think he is a Christian. The deeds of him, they fear. They laugh, they mock, they ridicule. 
They use the word Daniel. What he is? He's a drunkard. He's a drug addicted guy. Christianity is superb. Christians are the worst in this life. So dear brethren, if Christ our Lord of a God was in the sphere of adulthood from Bina, Sakhel and Kakma, then how much more we are to yet reside in your childhood of experiences and not able to reach the standards of understanding, not able to learn the thinking of prudence, not able to grow up to become kakma, and not to be entirely covered up with the sevenfold of the Spirit, Lord God, the Holy Ghost in your life. How many days more? Just look and analyze, we read. If there was a demon called a legion, so what was hindering him? Because they also fear and tremble. We found that that man was naked, he was not clothed. And we compared that to Matthew 22 verses 8 through 14, emphasizing the point why these people, they came naked because on this earth, the demons like legions were handling them. What was there? We look, 6,100 footmen, 726 people were the one who is to drive or who is to ride on the horses. So totally, there were 6,826 persons. That is called to be as a legion, one of the Roman army. So one legion meant to say so many people are there. So when he said, my name is legion in the time of my Christ, 6,826 demons. So now you just sit and calculate how many reasons you have not to become the Word of God. Can you exceed 6,826 reasons? You may say, no, no, I don't have so many reasons. Then you cannot be in the term of legion. That meant to say what you cannot be naked. That meant to say what you cannot come to the wedding garments or wedding feast without having the wedding garments. You can come with the wedding garments. Because no man has 6,826 reasons not to grow up in Christ. It's your arrogance to analyze. It's your ignorance not to look what you ought to be and what you are. You have completely failed to analyze, you have completely failed to learn, you have completely failed to realize that. Since you have failed to realize that, you are not able to look, you shall be in the sphere of adulthood. But you are still in the sphere of childhood. No fear. You are having to say you are having fear. If you have the fear of Lord God, then He will revere the names that have been kept for you, like Daniel, like John, like Peter, like Moses. You know, these are the great men, if you could look and say, We are the children of Abraham. Then Christ, our Lord of God, said, even John the Baptist, don't think you are children of Abraham. God the Father is able to rise great adult sons through the stones. If you are the children of Abraham, you would do the works of your father, Abraham. But you are not. The same thing having a great name like Daniel or John or Peter or Paul or Moses, you have to reflect their essence. Maybe the parents have kept that name for you, but you look upon the way of the unbelievers can believe upon the Lord God by your conduct. They would spit upon your face. They would say, rid off with the Christianity. The best one to live on the earth is a Christian. The worst one is ever to live on this earth is also a Christian. And between them you will get all media cures. The best person to live on the face of the earth is a Christian. The worst deceiver, the worst criminal. There could be no way far better than a Christian on the face of the earth. Because Satan knows very well to blasphemy the name of my Christ to such Christians on this earth. Worst criminals will be the Christians.
Jones. The unbelievers, at least, they have their own sect, their own understanding, their own way of life. They love to reside for a certain span of time. But they're doing it in ignorance, which they know not, as the people crucified. But now no one will be excused because the work of Christ, the gospel of Christ, has been spread abroad. So no one can say, because I was ignorant, I did this. God the Father calls for your account in a consciousness. So we meant to say what? If you're a true Christian, people will come to look upon the Lord God's services. How the word changed him. How he was earlier and what he is now. If you are a Christian, if you are not, you can never understand about that. So he said over here, dear brethren, be, but, be, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him and form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, even obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And afterwards we look in verse 9, Wherefore God has also, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. You know what a great thing is that? In order to make that greatness in your life, the first priority what God the Father would ask is the priority of becoming what is the true word of God in your life. If you don't know the true word of Lord God in your life, you will never reach maturity. When you will never reach maturity, you will never go through that evidence testing in the Lord either like Job or my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. People who have been occupied on the face of the earth with the life of being a beautiful gift called as mother so that she has great patience to teach. If she is not able to train and motivate their children to become a great missionaries like Bartholomew Zinberg who has been motivated by his mother to become a missionary. Again, so many great men they came to such countries, India, learned the languages. It was purely the love of the parents, the motivation of the parents. And in my country, India, we are not short of finding such men. If it go to any unbelieving sect, they would say, the visible gods are their parents and the verdict of the parents of what they say during the time of the death of what they say in the life that is what we're going to live you know they have this fear we are not able to be looking for some examples but in my country India itself we are able to find those men here at least we are looking upon the lives of the missionaries the way how their parents are supporting them or the things pertaining to the mother has influenced them but here you look, in my country, India, the visible gods are the parents. And whatsoever they say, like the Rechabites who kept the challenge in Jeremiah 35 and 36, they did not let go the words which they promised to their father, Jonadab. Therefore he calls them and he examines to them and he tells to Jeremiah, these people haven't changed the words of the Father, but my people, though I have sent, rising early in the morning, the bona fide gifted men of prophecy to those people, yet they have changed the true Lord God into failure. So he laments on that viewpoint, having a great pain. My people have not obeyed my voice. So that's an example in the Bible, the same thing we can find over here in my country, India as well. They would not let go the words of the parents, being a parent, for you what you're giving to your children. Are you capable of making them to be the great missionaries? Are you capable of showing them the great love of God the Father? If they could do that, then how much more we ought to train our children the way that they have to go? 
So the same thing over here, dear brethren, when the things pertaining to such great likeness of man and having to suffer on the cross, he was obedient. Therefore, God the Father gave him a great position, highly exalted position, a name which is above every other name. And at that name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, every knee should bow of the things which are in heaven and of the things which are on the earth and the things which are under the earth. So three categories, heaven, the earth and under the earth. So that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. So here you look. After passing the test of your evidence testing, in the life like Job, having to raise up your children, like the way how Job was careful enough towards the son so that they shall not sin against the Lord God, even in the thinking. So he goes to give every day the sacrifices to the Lord. So how about your feeding to your children? Then if it is a plan like church calling or the minister to the word of Lord God, like uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you will be tested. Are you going to survive without the food? As such many people today, why they come for ministries or for things to rise up money? So we know very well these are the things what they're going to do. So he said, are you going to stay in the ministry purely for the word of God or for your own money developing tactics? People are easily following the standards of money developing tactics. Those are those ministers who are serving for Christ. Freely they have got, freely they are giving. And that, by that we meant to say what? The word of God, not the miracles or healings. So, we look. The first examination for pastor teacher, Matthew 4, 4. And then Matthew 4, 6 through 8. Or Luke 4, 6 through 8. Utilizing the authority given for us by Lord God the Father for what? To go and make disciples of all the nations. Not going down to Satan. And how we are going down to Satan today? By our ignorance, not becoming the will of Lord God the Father to be shined. By your simple ignorance to the Word of God. When you don't take the proper Word of God and to teach to these people, that leads to ignorance. And that ignorance alone is enough. to bow down to Satan, not rightly dividing the word of truth, is bowing down to Satan. Therefore you get compromised with the churches. You love to become a men pleasers. Galatians 1.10, Apostle Paul said, if I were here to please men, I wouldn't have been the bond slave of Lord God. So if you're ignorant, if you're not able to rightly divide the word of truth, then what it meant to say? Clearly, in simple terms, you are a bond slave to Satan, not to Christ. You love to follow the gimmicks. You love to follow the standards of this world and say, no, no, we need to give them sweet sugar-coated preaching. If not, they get annoyed. <laughs> Hurt them with the truth rather than comforting with the lies. Do the surgery rather than giving. Medicines to the flesh which can overreact and make the conditions of that person to be worse than earlier. If they are in sin, reprimand them in the sin. Because present misery is the direct result of the sin what they're practicing against God. And do you think that will end after you die? Your sin is exactly sowing what you have now on this earth in your physical body, what you're experiencing. The same thing what you're experiencing will be exactly sowing for eternal destruction in the presence of the Lord. It is not just going to end up on the life's journey on this earth when you die. So you may say, at least now I'll be free. No, dear brother, you have been reaping up fortunes for eternal destruction. 
They are simply ripping up fortunes. You are not able to realize that. You are simply ripping up fortunes. Day by day you are ripping up fortunes. It's a point of eternal misery. Fortune. Now it is a misery on earth, eternal destruction in the heaven. And he may say, we confess our sins and we get back, dear brethren. For the pastor teacher, the right confession of his sins is to rightly divide the word of truth. For the believer, the right confession of his sins is to take up his cross and follow my Christ. So which you are doing? You are simply confessing your sins for the purpose of saying that we will have this and that. Saying that, Lord, I sinned against you, I did not come to the church, I did not do this. No, to keep aside. That's already been accounted for you for eternal misery. The way how we show indifference towards Bible doctrine, the way how we sow to the word of God, the same thing you will rape. Your indifference towards Bible doctrine will definitely destroy you. Those who love me, they love life. Those who hate me, they love death. Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. Blessed are the people who wait upon the doorposts of the temple of the living Lord of a God to learn his doctrine every day. Why? Because his word emphasizes to go and make disciples of all the nations. And that's the real purpose of our life. If you don't do that, better die. What do you will do in this flesh, grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting to the purpose of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Do you think it's worth the sin of ignorance, what we were reading from Numbers 15, 34 and 35. What is the sin of ignorance? Anyone who transgress the commandments of the Lord of a God, what will be the fate of that man? Absolute death. To die, he shall die. And why he shall die? Because he has done in ignorance. And why does God the Father don't give a chance for ignorance? Because you have never thought in your lifetime to erect a structure of discipleship program on this earth. Though John 1 love and emphasizes, you have been called to be born as Christians. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Exudes the authority to become the technon believers of Lord God. By that we meant to say what? Disciples of the word of Lord God. If you are a Christian, that's your life. If you are not in that sphere of your life, then you are not a Christian at all. You are simply enjoying your time for the standards of stupidity or lusts of this world. And then afterwards, the third test, not tempt to Lord of a God. So reaching your spiritual maturity begins when you have been put to test. After you pass the test, then you are going to be a maximum glorification of God's believer. You have glorified Lord God the Father to the max, either in the life or even in the plan of God. In the life like Job, in the plan of God like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Though there was food or not, you continued the ministry. Though they wanted to be in the process of going down to Satan, you did not, but you told them the word of Lord God accurately to follow the Bible. And not to tempt the Lord God, to repeatedly ask, Lord, give this, I don't have this, Lord, I don't have this, provide me this, provide me that. You know what you ask for God the Father every time you go there? You're asking, Lord, provide me doctrine, I want the word of Lord God. Give me doctrine, I want the word of Lord God. Because he has chosen these people for the purpose of his work, which is emphasized for us to teach, to be great his name on this earth and to make his name to be fearful on the places of this earth. But what has happened, you know, dear brethren? Hmm. Rather than becoming the word of Lord God to be great and his name to be fearful among the midst of these people, we find over here in the strong code number 888 for the New Testament that is called to be Greek. Again, one more code over here which has been called, followed by the word 890 
and 895. The first tribulate called to be A K R E O S A C H R E I O S, the strong code number. It meant to say, What, dear brethren, the one who is been earlier useful, but now he becomes not useful. In Matthew 25 30 and in Luke 17 10, which he said, We are unprofitable slaves, that which is our duty to be done, we have done it. That's the word a karyos. There, in the sense, what he said was, Lord, it's a bona fide duty for us, and we ought to do it, and we were mindful and we were bounded to do it, and we did it. So he said, We are unprofitable slaves. So we don't require any things on that. Because we, our duty it is, we have did it. So no need of showing favor, Lord, for us, that before you could come, or you could come, and the first lunch should be served for us because we have been working. He says, no. First master, it is you every time. We are unprofitable slaves. That which is our duty to be done, we have to do it. Luke 17, 7 through 10. So the word over there you can find, ah, carry on. That meant to say what? The one who is no more useful. You should have been going and making disciples of all the nations. But what is happening now? You have been no more useful to the work of Lord God. Therefore, the same thing over here in Matthew chapter 25, in verse number 30. Cast you out the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because the guy to whom that one talent was been given, he hid it and kept in the soil. So, the same thing, the burden which has been given for you in the church age, to make his name to be something far greater, to make to be named in the standards of becoming, as the process could call, as the word could say for us, as the things pertaining to be his name to be feared and revered, both things have failed. So he said, you are archarios, you are unprofitable. And then the second word, what he emphasizes over here, dear brethren, it has been called as Akrestos, the strong code number 890. So, it meant to say what? In Philemon 111, earlier he was useful, useless, but now he became useful. But using in Philippians 111, he said he was useless. So, Akrestos, that meant to say unprofitable, useless people. There is no profit at all. And he uses finally the word in Asukas, in 895, the strong code number, that is, without breathing, without having a life, without having a soul, that is called to be lifeless. So, in the classical Greek, it meant to say, without character. Without spirit, these are coverts. These are the way how we can call possessing no soul. But every believer has a soul. You cannot say they are having lifeless. But in the classical Greek, used in the standards of metamorphism, it uh, in metaphorically, it meant to say they are having no character. Why? They're not having the fear of Lord God to suffer for Christ. They're not having the fear of Lord God to learn the knowledge of Christ. They're not having the fear of Lord God to pass the stage of childhood by going up to become a Gabor man of strength. They're not having the fear of Lord God to understand that they should have been a so that they could be now in the adulthood of Lord God. They're not having the fear of Lord God to realize that they should be sakel. They should be having kokma, having the same disposition of the mind of Christ, what they were. So what they are now? Having no character. You know what it is? At least dogs on the roadside, though it not your own dog, any dog on the street, just put a food for two or three days. It will be faithful enough waiting for you and it will never forget your love. It is having some character, we can tell. But Christ, our Lord of a God, has given for us every day His essence, His doctrine, His mind.
so that he goes on to recollect we are having the sperm of Christ 1 John 3 9 he goes to recollect the very essence of your breath the divine spark which hits at you at the moment of your physical birth not Shema it meant to say igniting the for the format of your soul he meant to say in simple terms saying that I have made you in my essence in my glory and you people are not even having character to look the way of life now how simple the logic is We haven't been able to be that which is called. So he would say, you are asuke. The example we can find in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. David he said to them, you are the similar terms of asuke. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in verse number 7. And here when he uses the word asuke, that is your your having to be no character, no soul. He says simply translation, without life. And even the things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? So, for if the trumpet give an unnecessary sound, or uncertain sound, not unnecessary, uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So, talking to talk about the tongues passage over here, he said, without life, if you don't have an interpreter over there. And what does he meant to say? You're talking without character. You're spiritless. You think you're spirit, but the word says you're spiritless. The temporary spiritual gifts were used for a certain time and then afterwards they were ceased when the completed of the canon scripture has come. But they're still continuing that spiritless life without character. Even the unlife sound, which has been like this pipe or organs, he said, if they have not been sounded properly, how would they prepare? The same thing over here. Looking upon the standards of the lives of this man who are having no doctrine, we can easily conclude. Heart within us is broken. The things pertaining to the will of Lord God the Father is not been executed. We are like a man of drunkard. And yet, church is not able to wake up to know why he has chosen the people of Israel in the past for First Chronicles 17.21 and now in the present for the church something far greater in Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians, particularly Ephesians chapter 3 in verse 8 through 11, the polypicolous wisdom of Lord God which has to be made known right now through the church to the principalities, the powers, the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly. Not just to the earth. If the Israelites were being used in First Chronicles 17.21 to be made known to the earth, then the church has been used to make known to the heaven. There's something far away superior in upgradation. The people who haven't been upgraded for the word of Lord God are the pure people who have been ignorant about the plan of Lord God. So, dear brethren, if you are still in the standards of unprofitableness, if you are still in the standards of without character, if you are still in the standards of not being used, or to be called as your unprofitable slave, then what will be the fate of your life? Because life is too short for us to spend our time in search of vanity. So in Philip in Philemon one eleven he said A Christos. In Matthew twenty five thirty or Luke seventeen ten he said A Christos, the strong code number triple eight, and A Christos eight nine zero and Asukas eight nine five. You know who are these people? 
without character, unprofitable, set aside being no more useful for the Lord of a God, are those men who are going to say, Isaiah chapter 22 verses 13 and 14 is the key way for our life. In Isaiah chapter 22, in verse number 13, if you could open up your Bible, he says over here, saying that tomorrow we shall die. So, joy and gladness, slay oxen, kill sheep, eat flesh, drink wine, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. These are the people for the three categories, tribulate code, 890 code, 895 code, tribulate code, Matthew 25, 13, Luke 17, 10. 890 code, Philemon 1, 11. 895 code, 1 Corinthians 14, 7. Making sound which is not certain for them to be prepared. Sometimes we do not know how many people are able to get the text what we are preaching in this YouTube. But it sounds like that. 1 Corinthians 14, 7. But you know the valuable grace of Lord God the Father. At least some, where two or three have been gathered in his name as we look, at least some who are able to understand the meaning of the sounds, what we are teaching every day. So, dear brethren, he said in verse 14, The crowd of such people who say, Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Here he says, It was revealed in my ears by the Lord of hosts. The word revealed is not to call gala, made a naked exposition completely come to know because the word gala meant to say what their eyesight is never for discipleship program never in their life so these are the people called to be gala when lord god the father reveals this thing it meant to say there is no naked exposition so here it was revealed in my ears why ear gate is responsible like a matak as you're sowing in the soil the agriculture equipment called to be matak it has a sharp long pole having a hole so that one one seed is been taken and put deep into that that's like a matak it's an agriculture tools which was a hoe or a matak which had a white blade for cutting a plant stalks at the roots, the cups were harvested and for a supply of foods which is stored in the jars. So this matak, they go on to sow, they go on to crop, they go on to harvest, they go on to collect the food in the jars. So that's the point, matak. So that's your ear. So Lord God the Father has been able to do that like a matak. And this iniquity, the iniquity what? That they shall eat and drink and tomorrow we shall die. He said, this iniquity shall not be purged. You know, it shall not be kofir. It shall not be atoned. Why, you know, never in their lifetime they will become scribes. These are the categories of what we are able to look. Tribulate. Or 890 and 895 call. Tribulate, Matthew 25, 30, 890, Philemon 1, 11, 895, 1 Corinthians 14, 7, Asukas, without character, spiritless, 895, A, 890, Christos. and these are the people who are useless, and tribulate, called, Archarios, what they are, they are no longer kept aside useful for the work of Lord God. These are the people wherewith he calls. He has been revealed, gala, in the exposition of the years, because they shall not be compared, meant to say what, they shall not be atoned. Why, never in their lifetime they will become scribes, never in their lifetime the thought process will not be associated with the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Never in their lifetime. So they shall not be purged. You just look how many people have been there for the process of becoming a scribe. But Christ our Lord of God said Matthew, long back in Matthew chapter 13 in verse number 52, joined as a disciples, growing up into grammatias, such is the kingdom of Lord God and the work of Lord God. He said that long back. Not now, he said it long back. But today we are still not able to wake up for such life. So he said, they shall not be purged till when? Till you die. 
Till you die will be our Kairos. Till you die will be our Krestos. Till you die will be our Sukhas. Without character. Without being useful. You have been set apart to be dying sin unto death. Till you die. Therefore you may think, Lord, I'm coming to the church with the fear of Lord God. Lord, I'm coming to do this in the church with such fear, with such standards. But the word of Lord God says, you know why he's going to give you that fear? You have to come to know with the knowledge. That knowledge shall make you up to become a gram, uh, uh, that shall make you to become like a Gebor man of strength. From Gebor man of strength, you should have understanding. From understanding, you should become Kakmar, the, uh, sorry, uh, called to be Sakel. Sakel followed by the word, uh, uh, this word, Ya'at's counsel. And from there you have to become the wisdom. This is what your life is. And you're not able to look or learn about that life. So dear brethren, he said, Till they die, this sin will not be purged. And thus said the Lord God of hosts. And if Lord God the Father would say that long back in Isaiah 22, how appropriate it is to the present standards when people are ignorant to become the word of Lord God. When people are absolutely indifferent towards the knowledge of Bible doctrine. How much accurately it is able to apply. How much? Doesn't he say to the same man, he said, my bonds are filled, the soul, eat, drink and enjoy. What did he say? Tonight if you die, what you will do? What is the solution for that? Your iniquity cannot be purged, cannot be atoned. When? Until you take up your cross and follow my Christ and become the disciple of the word of Lord God, growing up into grammatias. Till that time, no atonement, no kofar. If not, iniquity cannot be purged and surely you shall die. That's the simple logic. And the people may say, it's not possible. We will be coming back. We are paying tithes. We are doing this. We'll be praying. We'll be doing that until and unless all these things. If you're not able to take up your cross every day and come to Christ, if you're not able to become grammatious into the standards of the requirements of the word of Lord God, you will be still thinking, eating, drinking, because we have slain the oxen. We have slain the sheep. We have done this. We have done that. But ultimately, dear brethren, since you haven't grown up to become a disciple into grammatious, your iniquity will not be perfect and whatsoever you try to do it will be absolute vanity vexation of your spirit though you apply your heart unto wisdom and know what are the affairs of man on this earth you will find as a result vanity 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 that's it they will have only one thing vanity the result of that is vanity that's what you can take it for sure vanity And you may think, no, Lord, I cannot be vanity. But the word of Lord God says, your vanity and your sin will not be purged if you're not growing up for Matthew 13, 52. And if you're not able to live your life for Matthew 28, 18 through 20, to go and fulfill the great commission of my Lord God the Father in making disciples of all the nations, then you just think you are the strong code number 888 in the Greek, 890 code in the Greek, again 895 in the Greek. For tribulate Akeros, or 890 Akrestos, and 895 Asukas. You are without character, spiritless, worthless, having not even like a character of a dog. What you are, you are lifeless, and what you are, you are meant to be kept aside for saying you are no longer useful to the Lord. You know why? <laughs> You haven't known the work beyond what he said in First Chronicles 17. Lord, the name to be great, the name to be revered. And right now through the church, the purpose of Lord God the Father, not just the earth, <laughs> the principalities, the powers, the rulers and authorities of the heavenly standards, they also should learn the polypicolous wisdom of Bible doctrine which has been taught day by day through the churches. Dear brethren, for the number of man, what has been assigned as six, we have great many lessons to learn from Deuteronomy chapter 10. In verse number 12, what does Lord God the Father require of it? And we also have 
a lesson to learn in the viewpoint of what is been called in the standards when you grow up to be a real man the man of god with that wisdom in second samuel chapter 22 in verse number 35 to destroy the teachings of men and inculcate the teachings of Lord God, which we don't have time, shall come back and continue tomorrow. But will you still make my Lord God the Father as Jeremiah prophet, chapter 23 and verse number 9? Heart within me is broken because they have forgot to keep your words. I have become a man like a drunkard. People have not known thy fear. They have been given the great privilege to experience the standards of becoming the phonorious mind of the Lord, Philippians 2.5. To experience your life in the spiritual adulthood. Why is it you still want to live a life that which is vanity on the face of the earth? Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short and at the responsibility to lay down upon our shoulders is too large. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believe in Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Where with you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care to so thorn logan. Herald the word in season or off season, because the diamond through my witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamond through my witnesses in Burlington E.T. follow the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond through my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. What is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being thankful for this great privilege to in the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to make known to the world the importance of your marvelous grace and the gospel of great opportunity to be saved by faith alone in Christ alone. At the Lord, you have chosen the people of Israelites to be the earthly glory. Beyond that, you have chosen the people of the church age to be heavenly glory. The earthly glory has failed in its mission, though you have given them a chance to represent back in the 70th week of Daniel. But the heavenly glory, O Lord, they have only one time on this life, before the rapture of the church, to prove that they are worthy for your work. At the Lord, they haven't reached the same mind of honorius of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to be in the sphere of spiritual adulthood in maintaining thy glory. And at the Lord, have given us this opportunity to preach to his people on your behalf, such as diligently sovereign Lord. If there is anything with our ignorance and arrogance, correct us, chastise us, and lead us in the path of your truth, because nothing we love to have our intercession, our supplication, our prayer, apart from enlightening in your word to teach these people to have the fear of Lord God, so that in each and everything, Father, they could understand the marvelous will of the Lord. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name, we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten, and challenge, and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.